Hawaii is not for everyone. It's not perfect. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Today's video, we're trying to get a little negative. We went over a bunch of reasons why you might not want to live here. Uh, I can't help but to throw in some positives because I don't like talking bad about my home. I think it's the best place on earth. And make sure you stay tuned till the end. I have a message for you. Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Derek Okahashi and Core Team Hawaii. Uh, moving to Hawaii. You might not want to move here if gas prices drive you crazy. 441 for regular, 461 for plus. What is the difference in this? Plus ethanol? Anyways, gas is expensive, you get the point. This is November 2021 that we're shooting this video. So we're in that post-pandemic or intra-pandemic supply shortage. We're experiencing inflation. It's been trillions of dollars generate whatever things are more expensive from building supplies to gas to houses to everything gas in hawaii is no exception are we the most expensive gas in the country if not we're pretty close so if gas prices are one of those things that drive you crazy you might not want to move here you might not want to move to hawaii if you think it's all sunshine and rainbows if you can afford to put yourself in a position to live that picturesque postcard life uh, then great. We have our violence, crime, all of the societal stuff. It exists here and we even have our own unique brand and flavor of it. Some people are fed up. They're even writing it on the buildings. They're fed up with Hawaii prices, gas, housing. Not all sunshine and rainbow. Some people are fed up. Another reason that you may not want to move to Hawaii is the cost of housing. Usually we use the word tear down. I don't even know if tear down is the appropriate word, but kind of because uh, it's halfway torn down, looks like there was a fire. But you could buy everything from this to this other property that we're gonna show you that our brokerage sold this year. Uh, maybe we'll show you one that we're closing on tomorrow. These are $3 million properties. Probably not a big surprise that there are $3 million properties in Hawaii. I mean, there are $20 million properties in Hawaii. But there's also this. And without doing the research, without looking at the tax record, I would venture to say that in this community, I could probably still sell this for four to 500,000. And that just shows you what the land is worth. Most people watching this uh, are probably thinking, you're crazy, four to $500,000 to buy a liability where I have to bulldoze it and, and build again. Again, I haven't looked it up, but my guess would be four to $500,000 just to sell the lot. We have had people reach out and say, Derek, look, I have $800 a month for housing and I have another 500 for groceries and stuff. And uh, I say, you know, respectfully, I think you should stay in West Virginia or, you know, like it's, it's not probably not gonna work here. If you can't afford Hawaii, that's a good reason not to move here. And maybe we'll plug in the weather. Like I've been out of the car for 30 seconds, I'm sweating. Uh, it's also hot. The housing market's hot and so is the sun. Let's get in the car. How long will it take me to drive to Eva Beach? Traffic to a beach is light. So it should take 24 minutes via Fort Weaver Road. I have the South African Syria. <laughs> you might not want to move to Hawaii if you like road trips, if you're prone to island fever. How long will it take me to drive to Honolulu? I'm estimating 18 minutes via H201 East. Mililani. 15 minutes. Kailua. 25 minutes. Hawaii Kai. It should take 32 minutes. Over 30 minutes. Haleiwa. 33 minutes. Makaha. So I'm estimating 43 minutes. Okay, this is the furthest place on the island I could think of. Laie, right? Yeah. How long will it take me to drive to the Polynesian Cultural Center? 58 minutes. The longest drive that I could think of to PCC, or the Polynesian Cultural Center, was about an hour. If you're that Southern family that has like an RV or a camper, you know, some, a fifth wheel, something like that, and that's part of what you guys do, you're not gonna, like, this is not the place. I, the furthest place I could think of is a little less than an hour from where we are right now. But most things were 15 to 25 minutes, they're 30 minutes maybe. And that's in the middle of the day with some traffic, right? For most people, wherever you live, you know, humans are creatures of habit. Wherever you live, you, you stay within your routine anyways. So why not, you know, have the aloha, have the, the beaches, the sun, the weather. If you want to go fly to Disney, like my wife wants to do every day, then fly to Disney, you know, or fly for the holidays or whatever. So our road trip is really going to another island, uh, going to the big island, Maui, Kauai, whatever it is you want to do. The plane goes like this. You know, they give you a juice and then you're, you're starting to drink it. They take it back. We're about to land. We are going to be doing videos on other islands. So our uh, Oahu versus Maui video will be premiering soon. And we're going to do more Maui videos. We're going to do more islands because it's really no big deal for us to go to the islands and 
In fact, we can help you with real estate on the other islands. Whatever's in your best interest, we may choose to refer you or we may choose to work with you. Uh, whatever the best fit is for your motivations, your clarity, really, and your goals. If you're prone to rock fever, island fever, all the other names for that might not be a place. You might not want to move to Hawaii, more specifically Oahu for this one, if traffic is an issue for you. I used to work at this Home Depot, and since I was a young man, just out of high school to now, the traffic is even is even worse. This is one of the worst intersections, I think, on this side of the island, probably. Would you, would you say that? Yeah, I guarantee you. On this side of the probably. island, right? So you come into Pearl City over here from Waipahu or wherever, and it's always lined up to the universe, like to the uh, community college. This red light is horrible, which is why you see the orange barricades trying to get out on that. So the whole thing is just jacked up. And if you zoom out here, there's a big thing of freeways. So on this side of the island, this is a good example of how the traffic can suck. We are densely populated on Oahu. I'm mostly able to avoid it with my profession. However, if you're doing the nine to five, commuting from west to east, it can suck. If you're coming from small town or, or you know, s small to mid-sized city in America, we might be a little worse. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience, if you're coming from the Bay Area, we're not worse than that. If you're coming from LA, we're not worse than that. I imagine the whole New York, New Jersey thing, we're not worse than that. Sometimes another place I've been to is like Virginia, like Hampton Roads, coming through that tunnel into Norfolk, uh, Virginia Beach. We don't usually get that bad either. There is a rail behind me, so that sh is expected to ease traffic at some point. It's a sticky topic. We'll probably do a whole another video on that at some point. If you come from big metro areas like, like San Francisco or New York or whatever, you're used to riding trains and subways and things of that nature. We'll see if that, if it's, if it's a smooth integration and if it's adopted and if it's productive and if, if, it, if it's a net positive overall, it's yet to be seen here and yet to be measured in Hawaii. At this point in November of 2021, I cannot tell you whether or not the rail will ease traffic in a big way. Speaking of the rail, I've never seen it going. It was empty, they're testing it. That's cool though. The first time I ever seen the rail go, it was the first time that you guys got to see it. You might not want to move to Hawaii if the conveniences of getting your Amazon, like in the Bay, I, I left you know years ago, but by this time you can probably get, order something on Amazon and get it that day. Here, you're lucky to get it in like three days on Amazon. Oftentimes it's weeks. We bought a home earlier this year, I had to get a whole appliance suite. I was gonna get them from another place, from the Navy Exchange, but I wanted to build a relationship with a salesperson at Best Buy so that I could pass on discounts to my clients. So I told the, the guy, you know, I sell a lot of homes, sell to buyers, and inevitably, you know, a handful of people will buy appliances every year. So although I can get them cheaper, I want to come build a relationship with you. But the, the exchange has these appliances in stock. So can you guarantee me that if I switch and I cancel that order and the pricing that I had over there, which is a sale price, that you will have these appliances in stock. There will be no hiccups in the supply chain and delivery. He said, I got you, Derek. We have them. We're good. And then Best Buy system, you know, they use a third party like salespeople, third party warehouse, and then there's Best Buy. So there's like three different entities not communicating well. You know, just my experience with Best Buy for the Best Buy attorneys out there watching this. It, and it, long story short, the, I couldn't get my appliances. I couldn't get my washer and dryer. I couldn't get this and that. And I had to pull some strings. I had to find out who the, who the local girl who worked at the warehouse was, talk to her. Oh, you know Christina? Yeah, actually, Christina's the agent I'm buying my house for. Oh, Christina's my good friend. They found some other inventory of some other things, uh, and I ended up getting appliances on time, but only because I knew people and kind of, you know, pulled strings. The appliances that I originally wanted, they weren't here, and it was gonna be weeks. Right now, it can probably take two to three months for certain things to come in if they're not already in process. So, uh, point being, if you wanna, order your your gopro on amazon and get it right away not gonna happen appliances definitely not gonna happen furniture when you're buying a new house that's not gonna be quick unless it's on island if it's not on island eight to twelve weeks i'm buying boxing gloves right now operation dad bod you know i i uh <laughs> no no <laughs> and i have my gloves from 15 20 years ago and they're all bust up so now i have to order gloves or if i want to buy gloves here there's a very small selection but uh, shout out to uh, Honolulu Fight Shop. There is that. It's worth it. We still live in the best place. But that's a big deal to you. If you need your stuff quick, 
Hawaii might not be the place for you. Do they do, in, I don't think we do Instacart. Maybe in town, yeah? I what is that? You don't see, he doesn't even know what Instacart is. <laughs> in the Bay Area, or probably a lot of mainland cities, there's this thing called Instacart, right? You can order your groceries. So you can put in your whole grocery order, someone will deliver it and you just tip them. Really convenient. And if you're in a bind or if you're sick or whatever happens, those are things that are not as common here. Another side note, Trader Joe's. We don't have Trader Joe's. You know, my family and I were making the decision to move back home. It was a serious consider. It might sound ridiculous, but we did stop and pause and like, do we want to live without Trader Joe's? So you guys know, if you're a Trader Joe's fan, you know. If you're not a Trader Joe's fan, I sound ridiculous right now. I miss Trader Joe's. Uh, every time I go to the mainland, we get stuff. And that's something that Hawaii people, um, it's like a request. You know, when your relatives go to Vegas or something, like, hey, can you get me this from Trader Joe's? So we don't have Trader Joe's here. Just a lack of conveniences. You know? So you might not want to move to Hawaii if you don't like the military for some reason. Maybe you are military and the culture fit isn't there. So in the first part, if you don't like the military for some reason, we have a lot of military here, we have a lot. We have Pearl Harbor Hickam, Schofield, Wheeler, Tripler, Coast Guard. I'm actually a former active duty Coast Guard myself. But that's, you know, some people wouldn't want to live in San Diego because of the Navy, and I get it. Some people wanna, wouldn't want to live in Virginia. Or maybe you're not military, maybe you're just from the mainland and uh, you think that it's not gonna be a culture fit. You know, you don't wanna take your shoes off when you go into the house. Go through the whole thing where you're supposed to kind of be a little more modest and, oh, I got this one, you pay. You gonna pay, uh, are you gonna pay or am I gonna pay? Like, that's not how we talk, right? Like, we're more like, oh no, you pay, you pay, oh, no, I'll pay. Kind of like in Japan or somewhere like that. Hugging, kissing. I went to elementary on the mainland. I moved to Hawaii for the first few weeks. It was a little weird, cause like the group that I got into, all these guys from Ever Beach, everyone shakes everyone's hand, boom. There'd be 20 guys, 20, 20 guys in the morning. Eight, hey, how's it, Kenj, Ty, Jordan, G, John, Micah. And I, was, I literally feel like I just saw you guys because we did this at the end of school at like 2 p.m. It's 7.30 a.m. Like every day we got to do this. And it's like, yeah, you do because it's a respect thing. If you don't do it, it can be seen as disrespectful. So that, that's just a little nuance. It's not that big, big of a deal. But for some people, the culture may not be a fit. So if it's not a fit, maybe you don't want to move here. Another reason you might not want to come to Hawaii is the lack of fresh food. You can get fresh veggies and anyways, let me focus on the negative. There's more fast food here. With the cost of living being so high, uh, with it being harder to access, you know, grass fed meat and kale from Watsonville, California and all that sort of stuff. We have a little bit more of a spam and rice culture, you know, musubis, fast food culture. I knew when we were moving home from the Bay Area where everyone's all, you know, organic and granola that we were inevitably gonna eat fast food more and I was afraid of it, and we did. Look, just right here, Popeyes, Taco Bell, Jack in the Box. There's a McDonald's down there. I've been around the country a little bit, and in the South, there's more of a fried food, fast food culture. Chick-fil-A's versus this place, you know, Raising Cane's and... So you lived in Oregon, right? Yeah. And you lived in like Portland. Portland. Like, like keep Portland weird or whatever their thing is. Compared to Portland to here, Hawaii people don't eat as. I agree with fast food being more prominent. More of a, yeah. Fast food's more prominent. But at the same time, you know, where else can you go get street mangoes, which we've done, we've seen in our videos, papayas and catch fresh fish. I mean, to counter the negativity that I'm spewing out here, there's a place called Fresh Catch right over there. So shout outs to Fresh Catch. I imagine they have a ton of fresh seafood. People from all over the world want our fresh ahi and mountain apples. You know, Hawaii can also be a beautiful, healthy place. But the way that life is set up here, if you're just, a, you know, working and going through the routine, it can be a little harder to just dive in and get something fresh. We're still catching up. You know, we don't have as much of a broccoli sprout culture as some places, you know. A little bit, little bit more of a chicken nuggets with fruit punch culture and i don't want to give this tip out but if you never had sprunch well, people don't know about that right yeah. so every fast food place here if, i guarantee you if i go in here right now and say can i have a whatever with a sprunch they already know sprite and fruit punch and i don't want you to drink that but you know that just shows the hawaii fast food culture we have a lot of sugary drinks and a lot of fast food just avoid it so you might not want to move to hawaii if if you're not street smart. We have a culture of really high respect. Aloha is at the center of our culture. And we also have a, an aspect to our culture 
that uh, is affected by poverty and is affected by, you know, maybe a bit of a warrior's mentality, right? It's, you know, it's not like New York where you're like walking and everyone, you know, I don't know how that is to be in New York, but you're measuring everyone. There's people from New York I've met in the Coast Guard and otherwise, they have a different level of street smart, you know, different, there's a different thing about them where they grew up. Like, like your, uh, your friend Alejandro, he's talking, yeah, he's yeah, talking yeah. about how like, there's an art, how you argue in traffic and how you like honk the horn and bicker at people. There's a flow in it. We don't do that here. You'd, you'd fight by the time that happened, right? There's a certain level of poverty too. So I'm, I'm kind of touching on two things. We chose this spot because there tends to be a lot of uh, homeless people on this trail. There's, there's people that live in tents along this trail. So that's why we chose this spot as the backdrop for this. Now in Hawaii, we have a saying, people are not uh, homeless, they're just houseless because Hawaii is their home. If you watch our Y&I video, there's a, a, a houseless person. It's seemingly houseless, I don't know. Someone pushing the cart and they're kind of in the way, I think, or something. And they're like, hey, how's it, brother? Like, sorry. You know, still full of aloha. Probably different than, say, Skid Row in LA or places like that. There's definitely poverty in such a, a high cost of living place. And sort of tied to that is we do have a culture that at times can be, you know, we can have a bit of a warrior, warrior's mentality sometimes. And uh, see, it's got the shaka from uncle. And so you need a different level of street smarts. You need a, Hawaii is its own brand of like, you learn how to reciprocate respect and that helps you to avoid conflict. I don't want to overstate this because it's not like you need to be scared walking around Hawaii, but you know, you, there are places where you want to pick and choose, maybe certain corners and pockets you want to avoid. And if you find yourself mixing with those people, there's a certain way to interact and reciprocate. So anyways, you may not want to move to Hawaii if you're totally used to nothing but rounded corners, uh, nerfed edges, and not needing to have a different street smart about you. You hear that? Mr. Grinch, I wouldn't touch you. I wouldn't move to Hawaii if I needed it to be cold when I was listening to the Grinch. I moved back home a few years ago and we moved home in a March. So it was about nine months, eight months, holiday season hit. And I was used to Northern California. You know, I was used to people wearing the, the appropriate colors, you know, hunter green and mustard and reds and sweaters. And we're over here hot during winter, right? It just didn't feel the same. I had been on the mainland for 10 years. So what my family did, I might be able to pull the video from somewhere. We put on warm clothes, so we put on like a sweater, beanie, jeans, shoes, and we blasted the air conditioner in the, in the van, and we tried to make ourselves cold. Don't move here if you don't like people having loud cars. We tried to make ourselves cold. We went and got like a coffee or a hot cocoa or something, and then we went to look at Christmas light. It just wasn't the same. Christmas is a different thing. The fall is the time that I miss, I miss the mainland the most. Those changing leaves. I don't even watch football that much to be quite honest, but I like the fact that it's playing. It like represents the season, right? It's just not the same. So if the holidays are a huge thing for you, plan to go back home for the holidays or Hawaii might not be your thing. Can we, can you look at this sign? Don't move here if you like cool weather all the time. When it gets into the 60s, low 70s, it's like, it's a cooling for us, right? Like, it's cold. Uh, we actually just bought our plane tickets to go to Tennessee for Christmas, and uh, I'm not looking forward to 20, 30 degrees weather, talking about the weather. Oh, it's so cold, it sucks. Like, yeah, it does suck. <laughs> like, it sucks. I really do miss the fall and the initial crisp cooling of fall and the leaves changing colors. I wouldn't give up all of this for that. But if that's a big deal for you, winter's your favorite season, you like to snowboard or whatever the deal is, you're a skier, maybe you don't come here. Might not be the place for you. All right guys, so there you have it. Uh, today we were talking negatively about Hawaii. Uh, couldn't help but throw in some positive stuff. So I wanna remind you that I moved home to raise my children here. Uh, I moved home to pretty much be here for the rest of my life. I might split my time at some point, but this is home for me. I still think it's the best place on earth. But as with anywhere, it's not perfect. I think we showcased some of that today. And if you wanna get in contact with us, please contact us through our website. You can fill out the contact form there. 
Some people slide in my DMs and text and stuff as well. So please reach out to us. Look forward to connecting with you, whether you're a year or two out or whether you're a week out and you have your house chosen. Thank you for watching. Please watch more videos. Please leave us some comments. Put a gas in our tank. Put a battery in our back. Give us that feedback, engagement. There's actually a red subscribe button. Go hit it. Go hit like. Thank you, guys.